What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Paris and I make videos all about candle making and the starting and managing of my small candle business, Lady Simone Candle Co. Today we are talking about hot throw, one of the most frustrating things when it comes to making candles. Today I am going to give you some of the best tips on how you can achieve a stronger hot throw with your candle. So let's just get started. <music> As you can see in my last couple videos, I have been filming right here in our little dining area. Toddler is sleeping upstairs and upstairs is where my little candle area is where majority of my videos have been filmed. So he sleeps, so I came down here so that way I can get this video filmed. So probably my very first tip is choosing the right wick. Tip number one, choosing the right wick is so so important for a number of reasons when it comes to a candle burning that entire chemical process is fueled and works together the wax the fragrance oil and the wick it all has to work together in order to of course release a scent right it all has to work together so not having the right wick it can really impact how it burns and how it releases that fragrance in the air around your home in your space where you're burning it what i always recommend to beginners is going to candle suppliers websites i've been asked so many times about the hot throw and how come i can't smell anything the first thing i always ask is did you did, are you sure you chose the right wick um, in your testing process. Big major candle suppliers such as Candle Science and Lone Star Candle Supply typically have a wick guide on their website. And I always refer beginners there because you can choose the type of wax that you're using in the size jar that you're using. And they'll oftentimes give you one to two recommendations of what wick and what wick size work best with your type of wax. Tip number two would be curing your candles. Now, I'm not saying you have to cure your candles for like eight weeks. <laughs> Waxes such as like 464, it's recommended to cure for, you know, several weeks in order to really allow it to sit in the fragrance oil and wax to really marry in order to release a prominent scent throw. Um, other waxes such as paraffin, you can wait and start burning it as soon as a, a day to a couple days with the cocoa soy which is the wax i use i tend to let it cure for about a week and the scent throw works fine so give your candles some time to cure especially if you're working with more eco-friendly and natural waxes give your candles at least a week or two to cure before you test and burn your candles so that way you are making the most accurate analysis on the scent throw. Tip number three, using too little or even way too much fragrance oil. I was one of those beginners where I naturally thought the more fragrance oil you use, I mean, the stronger the candle's gonna smell, right? No, that is actually, it actually does more harm than good, believe it or not. When you add way too much fragrance oil, it can really impact the chemical process of the candle. And when I say that, I'm saying it can actually clog the wick and impact the way the scent goes through the wick and then releases out into the air. It's a whole chemical process behind that. And so when your wick is clogged, it's not gonna release the fragrance oil in the best way that it could should it not be clogged so and and then on top of other reasons um the as the candle burns down you'll see just fragrance oil residue kind of like when you see oil and water try to mix and you see like 
oil droplets in the water, it tends to separate from the wax um, or even um, the wax tends to push the fragrance oil um, out. And so you even can have like fragrance oil, it looks like dew drops or dual droplets on top of the candle. And it almost reminds you of kind of like a rain cloud. I always use this analogy. We all know <laughs> when we were young in science, we learned that, you know, when too much precipitation is in the cloud, the cloud, you know, expands and then it releases the water. And that's tend to how a candle does too. When there's too much fragrance oil, it it pushes, pushes all that fragrance oil out because it can't handle it. So I always recommend, depending on what wax you use, check and see what fragrant low, fragrance low percentage um, is recommended and then work within that. I tend to find between eight to even, eight to 10% works very well with eco-friendly waxes such as soy, cocoa soy, waxes like that. Um, and so that is actually a good happy medium um, when it comes to scent throw and understanding that when it comes to more eco-friendly waxes, um, you have to be very careful in how you handle it. So please do not make the mistake of thinking to adding more wax will do the trick. And then adding too little, um, maybe even on the lower end of like 6%, um, especially if it's a lighter type of fragrance, like a lemon or a citrus, um, it's definitely gonna burn more subtle. My fourth tip is choosing the right wax. Uh, this is tricky as well because there are tons of waxes out there and they're all great and you just wanna probably try them all to see which one you, know, you wanna work with, um, especially if you're trying to go more on the eco-friendly route. Um, but yes, choosing the right wax. Now, it's really up to you. There's, it's a matter of, you know, what you want to sell, what you want your brand to represent or what type of customers you want to cater to. Um, you know, we're living in this eco-friendly type of world now. So if you want to cater to the more eco-friendly, yay, then you're going to choose more of the eco-friendly waxes versus, you know, paraffin um, wax where the scent throw is already, it's known to have an impeccable scent throw, which kind of the bigger box uh, candle makers use, such as Yankee Candle. Um, so, you know, it's just a matter of understanding and um, understand, yeah, understanding that if you're going more of the eco-friendly route, do not expect a pack punch of a scent throw <laughs> you have to understand that because you're using more of an eco-friendly wax such as a 464 or a cocoa soy blend um it's not going to give you that um powerful punch with like a paraffin if you're trying to make you know a candle strong like a bath and body works or a yankee candle so just keep that in mind so if you are looking to to sell or make candles that pack a strong punch I would recommend going more of the paraffin route or even the paraffin blend routes um, if going that eco-friendly way is not a huge deal. My fifth tip is use additives. There's an additive called Vibar. I'm not sure if any of you have heard of it. I'm sure some of you probably have though. Um, and adding um, an additive such as Vibar, especially in eco-friendly waxes like a 464, it is um, helpful in terms of enhancing the scent throw. So if you are looking for another way um, of enhancing your hot throw for your candles that you wanna sell, check out Vibar. And of course, read the instructions, making, making sure you're doing what you're supposed to do, adding what you're supposed to add, and incorporate that into your candle making process and formula and test it and see how that works for you. My sixth tip is choosing oils that complement your wax. Not every wax can tolerate, or I should maybe reword it to, not every oil is complementary to every single wax. So um, for example, cinnamon is strong. Cinnamon fragrance is strong. I don't care where you buy it from. <laughs> I've bought cinnamon from several different suppliers and no matter which supplier I purchased it from, it was strong 
in all the waxes I've tried. It's strong in 464. It's um, quite strong in my cocoa soy blend. Um, it's strong in beeswax. Um, and then actually I've been playing around with the cocoa apricot blend as well. So since like cinnamon is strong and works well in whatever wax you use versus like more of a citrusy or lemon type scents that are designed to give off more of a subtle scent throw anyway. And so what I recommend is, again, getting on a supplier's website such as Candle Science and just kind of normally sites like that, they have like a fragrance oil ratings. Um, and so when you click on that particular oil that you're interested in, it will let you know, okay, it has this much of a scent throw and this type of wax. Um, and you can also reach out and email them as well. So you can say like, hey, I'm using Cocoa Soy Blend. I'm thinking about buying this type of fragrance oil. How would you say this oil complements this wax in terms of a hot throw? But again, major suppliers typically have a fragrance oil rating system where if you click on that wax, it will give you information about how well that particular oil works in what this particular wax. So I would check that out as well. Tip number seven is a combination of a couple things I've picked up over the last couple years of playing and making candles. So I would also recommend try adding your fragrance oil at a lower temperature. So for example, if you normally add your oils at around 180 degrees, try adding your oils at maybe like 160, 165 and see if that helps. Doing that tend to help um, avoid fragrance oil burning off while you're allowing your wax to sit until it's time to pour. Another thing that I've learned that has really helped my process is stirring your wax and your fragrance oil mixture for at least three to four minutes. Doing this will really, really help your wax and fragrance oil to really marry and bind together. So there you have it. Those are a few of the best tips that I have picked up over the last few years from learning from other expert candle suppliers, also just from in my kitchen and just picking up on some things and trying some things myself. So why not pass it along to you? So take time to try out some of these tips and hopefully they work for you. And until next time, say bye. He just woke up. <laughs> bye everyone, see you in the next video. You want to be in mommy's video? Mm -hmm. <laughs>